So explain what is that monstrosity that we are seeing here? What is that well, even? Like, what is this build? Well, what you're seeing here is um, is a sleep ball build, right? So I have this thing, and I can do I can do pew pew really fast, as you can see, you know. Mm -hmm. And is there any sort of the difference in the speed between between the black bow and? Uh, the other uh, flexible bows, let's call it that way. Yeah, well, the black bow is somewhat special in that it's technically in the regular bows category, but it has the same moveset as a light bow. But it, it basically has it the same slower moveset, just or the same more speed? damage. It is just more damage than other light bows, just but more it has damage. the same moveset. Okay, so no yeah. downsides, okay. Okay, gamer, but tell me. Once you're gonna put someone to sleep, you have only katanas. How can you yeah. possibly do a lot of damage in that case? Well, like this. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But like, it's just a, it's just like a little bit more powerful swing. Why that would be any stronger than, for an example, a jump attack? Well, because it's, it's, it's. If you add up the damage, it's actually, um, it's actually more. The unsheath R2 has a motion value of 245, so it's it's pretty immense. So you want to tell me the calculation that is happening with the uh, unsheath R2 is that you take your air, you multiply it by 245 percent, and then you essentially uh, removing the, de uh, like adding to the equation the, the defenses of the opponents and then you have the actual damage. That sounds like it would deal a lot of damage overall. How much yeah, it is it on the average? Uh, oh. It really depends on what you're running. The highest that I've seen is something like 1,500 with Shard of Alexander at Leonia with Lightning on Sheath R2. So it's, but how's... yeah, 1,500 is kind of as high as it goes. Okay, so so it deals a lot of damage. You put you put people to sleep. How much how much damage you deal per uh, accurate arrow shot? It's like more or less it's uh, two hundred maybe. It's it depends. I mean arrows are pierce damage, and with spear talisman, it's going to be a little bit more or not depending on the counter hit. But yeah, it's, it's two hundred is a is a good number. All right. So ultimately, what you want to tell me is that if, for example, you put people to sleep in three shots if they are not prepared because one arrow deals 90 um sleep uh build up yes if i if i remember correctly it's, it's 96 for the trina's arrows okay i see so you you probably put people to sleep in like uh three arrows if they they do not have like a specified build yeah against veterans armor it is uh 2.7 something something arrows that it would take. I mean, obviously, it's going to be three. You can't deal damage with 2.7 arrows, but you know, all right, that's, that's roughly what it takes. All right, so what you want to tell me is that like this build essentially puts you to sleep and one shots you, adding all yeah. the numbers usually. Under the right conditions, add Lyurnia with Shroud of Alexander, and if those arrows are genuine hits and not phantom hits, then you add a one shot. Interesting. All right. Show me. I have like wrong uh, physic, but whatever. I... Oh fuck. <laughs> well, I mean, what happened? Yeah, I got staggered while putting you to sleep. That's not good. That took a while. I've I've had better rounds, but it, I guess it works. Essentially, what happens here: the uh, power of the mobile uh, bow is in the fact that you can constantly apply the pressure, despite being in the defensive stance, because you can essentially 
uh, hit with the arrows in the air, you can hit with the arrows after the roll, and so on and so forth. You do not really have to, to stand in the in the bow stance and then like uh, shoot your opponent down. So it is like very mobile weapon, whereas you are constantly applying a pressure. Furthermore, we have a very good latency to each other. Whereas since it is a status effect, it scales up with the latency because of the all the ghost hits and so on. So ultimately this build is what? It is technically better on the high latency, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So because of our latency it's basically yeah. What happens here is I pretty much have like a way easier time dealing with it than than, than I would have if, if the latency was on a higher halberd and seemed not that effective because you could just like uh, uh, react but let's see with something that applies a little bit more of the mental damage let's call it yes. that way sign is, sign is down. okay This is such good latency. UGS is really strong. Are we really well. crouch poking oh, sad face? Oh boy. Alright, so UGS definitely feels very strong as you can constantly apply the pressure. Yeah. And because it's of not that. Really possible. Yep. I would say UGS is essentially the hard counter to bomb. Uh, because you, you can just constantly apply this pressure. I can never really fire an arrow safely. And even with light rolls, you can't get away from a UGS that is as long as the ghost. So it's it's pretty much the hard counter. Okay. I got also prelate armor to get myself that plenty of additional points. Because now I'm going to be more exposed to the potential attacks. And that almost fucking killed me, per se. What I'm also doing, I am actually crouch canceling, which allows me to, to dodge the arrows somewhat too. And sleep. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I would have taken one arrow that last was 92 damage on G32. So yeah, even, even if I have stacked a lot of stuff it still was very 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 hard for me to to get you and essentially ultimately it seems like ugs just is more stable let's call it that way and yeah. because of that you have kind of like better chance to win this matchup with the ugs let me try with even more of a stack i'm gonna get myself a great shield and let's see how how the thing gonna work like with the great shield there's also a small shield in the game which gives you 50 extra focus. Oh, I, I'm, I'm using the Great Shield Equivalent. Crest. Eclipse Crest. Oh, that gives you focus? Wow. Yeah, it gives you everything. Plus 50 to essentially all the statuses. Let's go. I 
Okay. Yeah, I think I've really misplayed this one. Mm, yeah, but on top of that, I just... I don't really have to, to bother about being a uh, stunt anymore. Like, the, the shield is a great help. Shield poking wins again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, this, who, this who could have thought shield poking is well, who fucking have thought, yeah. strong in this game? <laughs> wow. Wow. We, we've just made a discovery that's oh, Wow. Wowzy. Shield poking is perhaps like one of the most OP shit in the game. Wow. <laughs> and to be wow. fair, it's an entirely different thing playing against you versus playing invasion randoms because they're oftentimes going to be standing still, not really realizing what the danger of getting slapped is. So I've, I've killed fingerprint shield pokers with this thing, but when played optimally, I don't think that this default can really work against shield poker. I'm gonna do the average gamer in the invasions cosplay. Let me. Okay. Let me actually. Is that zero poise? Close, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's so cute. How did that? Yeah, sometimes I have no idea. Just going. It's insane. Our latency is way too good, man. I need lag. <laughs> I feel like the light rolls aren't even really helping here because they create too much. Oh, th th those are not even. Light yeah, those are not light rolls. No, I mean my light rolls. Ah, okay. I, f I feel like they're actually counterproductive because the way that you want to zone with bow is that you don't. Like, you don't go so far away from your opponent that you can't shoot them anymore. And if you go too far away, then, yeah, you get messed up. Oh. Essentially, ah, and I, I still had the the talisman, clarifying talisman. I, I forgot to take it off. So yeah, overall, it would be way easier for you if I if I would have everything off. This talisman makes like a huge difference. Out of the pure curiosity, I'm gonna run a not very good setup. Uh, I've essentially, my status effects uh, have my sta resistances are just garbage. So you're gonna put me to sleep in three, uh, three moves, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try the uh, dual spears, as technically it's supposed to be pretty good. Oh, the moveset is good. It's just that, like, these are, like... These uh, these dual spears are kind of garbage, yeah, because they are very short. Ouch! Ah. Ooh! How that much was... damage was that? <laughs> that was one thousand four hundred twenty. Yeah, and it wasn't even raining. So yeah, that's yeah, Jesus Christ. That's a lot of damage. It also shows like a beauty of how important statistics are. I've been running this in Invasions for, you know, like far above 24 hours of in-game time, and I'm still not getting any hate mail. Why am I not getting hate mail? Uh, I, I have zero Steam profile comments as a result of this. I'm so confused. It's because honorable setup. <laughs> I, Honorable uh, Sleepo is Because, like, you know, the, the, the bow is not on the list of powerful stuff. It's yeah. not UGS, poke. 
it is not uh, Rivers of Blood and it's not Moonvale. Ren still hates it. Are you going to be running anchors? Okay, that's that's ballsy. Let's let's see. RTR, huh? Damn, our latency is so good. It's actually insane. Where's the lag? I need lag. Hey. Oh man, I, th I think I've just misplayed that. There was, uh -huh. no, there was no losing matchup. <laughs> yeah, that's I should the... not have gotten hit by that JL1. I think I started running exactly at the same time as I wanted to roll. And that, was, that was tough, man. I, I think like anchors are just that good, man. Yeah, no. It's uh, nerf really required. Nerf anchors. <laughs> nerf anchors, yeah. Nerf anchors, man. Too strong. Man, I, I have seen people getting one shot at. Uh, uh, I got one shot on your stream by them. Ah, true. That was infuriating. <laughs> Ouch. The odds of that happening are so low. Because an arrow does 20 points damage, it should not be breaking their points. That was just pure luck. Yep. Little bit of the <laughs> mix up. <Yeah. laughs> that jumper one did 700 or 800 or something like that. that 690, exactly. Yeah, that's that's really insane. Yeah, it is because of the Cloth Talisman and Spear Talisman. You cannot oh, she's gaming. You you cannot stack the you, you cannot stack at the bullgoat with the jump attack. How much poise damage it does? Or it was just like it's, a head, 90, head hitbox. Nah. It's 91 poise damage. You 91. can legally poise the JR1. Actually. Yeah, that was I same punch. <laughs> I can't believe that hit. So the weak points. From what I see, when you are doing the double hit, then you are in the longer stun, and this is the moment when you actually can get hit. Uh... Yeah, that was worst possible. I think the clip happened there. Ooh. Okay. Ouch. Uh, I got very greedy there. And now that normally there, there was opening, but uh, the, the roll attack is just too slow. It's 
a good read. Yeah, that was essentially the bait on that purpose. Well, the CR1 is good enough tracking for that. Yeah, it's, it's just too tough. The problem really becomes when you stack the focus, because I got to at a point where I think I had four consecutive or so sleep arrows or, or, or so, but it's, um, yeah, you can just eat the bolus. I wouldn't play this matchup anyways if I know in, my, in advance that my opponent is stacking the focus, because it is too risky. It's essentially, your progress when it comes to the status buildup is just entirely lost as soon as your opponent boluses. And if it takes five or so arrows, then they can just reset it, you know, have, like, they get shot once, get away with, I don't know, 25% sleep buildup, but that puts them back into a favorable position. And so it's it's just too easy for people to bolus and to get away from the sleep when it takes more than three or, or maybe four arrows. Essentially what so, the uh, what the build is, it is absolutely amazing as a surprise build, as a kind of cheese build. And uh, it just falls off, like, with, yeah. with the proper preparation, which ultimately means, in fact, that this setup can guarantee you uh, at least one win. Can this setup, like, a respect into... Or maybe different thing. Can you use any sort of the other, like, a weapon set uh, on this build without any sac uh, without sacrificing anything? Like, um, I, I could also play Parston Straight Swords and then use the L1 L1 true combo out of sleep in order to punish that. So there are many ways to um, punish sleep. It doesn't necessarily have to be Unsheath, but Unsheath is very, very good because it also knocks you down in addition to um, in, in addition to dealing the damage. And so when you're knocked down, I can recover stamina and already prepare for shooting more sleep arrows into you, which is the setup for the next sleep essentially i see and while you're knocked down you can't um you can't change your talismans or so it's you, you can just do nothing in that moment but i recover stamina it's, it's very comfortable then. i see uh strength can just do a jump attack with some you know big paired weapons and use a bunch of stuff okay that works yeah, that works <laughs> i was actually thinking if Yeah, it, this essentially forces you to... Ah, the tracking is just too good, man. Yep. The thing is, if you want to prevent people from bolusing, then you also have to pressure them. But running towards UGS is is pretty insane. Over yeah, there. yeah, that's like a very dangerous move. Ooh, that that headshot was fucking juicy. Ouch. Yeah, yeah the, I, I was I was to trying play. to read this jump for a while. Now I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> but oh, yeah, like the the power of the gravity bolt on on this beautiful weapon is that like even though it's looking like you could jump over it, you cannot. This this hitbox is actually very very large. Uh, to be fair, sooner or later you would run out of FP, and if you drink a flask. And then if, if P-Flask, it would cost you two or so sleep arrows, which is pretty dangerous. I mean, that that depends uh, if player knows how to cancel, uh, technically, yeah? Because if, if you are just simply... If I would throw the, the fan dagger on you after after drinking, then then I, I guess I can just, you know, get off faster. But yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely at least one arrow on my head. When I am running, like, an optimized setup, against uh, against this this build it is i still have to focus a lot i still have to to dodge a lot and like you know it's uh, i'm yeah. doing stuff that a lot of, of of gamers just simply don't do i dodge a lot of the arrows with the with, with the canceling my my recovery by just uh, simply using the crouch cancels and so on that's 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 things that not everyone do and on top of everything that's also things that 
do not scale that good with the latency. So the higher latency, the harder it is to do this type of stuff. It's a tough matchup. Yeah. Very, very, it's, it's very ba tough. It's basically the best possible situation for you against it. And it's still dangerous. Right? It doesn't turn into a complete meme despite everything.